Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Michael Sulo, and this will be our third session of Painting in the European Style. And of course, as you know, if you've been following Exploration of the Fine Arts, we've been painting a still life, and we're at the point where most of our underpainting is completed. We have a few velaturas already on, as you can see, a little bit of color happening. And today we're going to continue with the velaturas. We're going to add additional color and we'll work our way through the velaturas and then we'll have to stop because they need to dry. And at that point we'll add some more details and wrap up our painting. We're going to begin this third session by adding some velatura color and velatura once again in English means half paste and you know what does that mean? What it means is we're taking the uh, paint from the tube and rather than using it, if we used it directly out of the tube it would be called impasto, impasto paint, thick paint. Now what we want to do is thin that paint down the word means half paste, but maybe a little more or less than halfway. And we'll use media for that, of course. And in this case, we're using Winsor Newton liquid, and that will give us the breakdown that we need. A painting media. But I want to take this down, and as you can see, and let me see if I can show you a little better. I don't know how good the camera is going to pick up this just soft color where you see the white next to the velatura of ochre. Now this is not glaze, it's not as thin as a glaze. It has to be forceful enough to create a very soft kind of yellowy color. I'm going to do it down here also. As you can see, now all of a sudden it's starting to go down. What we want to do is to take our painting and layer it. So our underpainting, as you can see here, is very harsh, very strong, and we want to soften it down. What we're not doing here, and let me make this clear, we're not painting trompe l'oeil at this point. Trompe l'oeil in French, of course, means fool the eye. We're not looking to fool the eye. We're looking to do a realistic oil painting. Now, when we're doing velatura uh, or even glazes with ochre, and it's done very often, very often you use yellow ochre. And the point is that the yellow ochre really mimics talon wax um, residue. So I, I don't know if you were a smoker or are or wore another time. Uh, if you smoked in your car, you know that your windshield always had a thin film of tobacco color uh, film on it. And so, as you can see, it's happening here. And in the days when smoking cigars was a thing that men did together, and almost as football on television is today, or baseball, or some sport. Um, smoking cigars together and having brandy in was very chic and very masculine. But the residue of that is that there was always this kind of yellow ochre film on everything. And people who were uh, of very extreme wealth, for instance, oops, that's too much. People who were of extreme wealth and had crystal chandeliers and so on would have to maintain those chandeliers, take all the crystal down and clean it and wash it before they rehung it back on uh, the chandelier. Big job, big job. 
So I'm going to move on and go, and you'll see it pretty much on the green ash, this green marble ashtray. The, oops, again, too heavy right there. And so I'm going to use my fingers. Once again, I use my fingers because I've been painting a long time, a long time. And I know that the liquid that I'm using does not affect me in any way. And so I'm not afraid to put my fingers in it. If you're going to do what I'm doing and stick your fingers into it, please find out if you're allergic to linseed oil uh, or any of the other materials that are in the tube of paint. At this point, thinking of the old days, or at least what I've read, there would be a time after dinner where the men would gather in a separate room from the ladies, and of course they would have cigar cigars, perhaps cigarettes, uh, maybe a drink, a little bit of something sweet. So that's where we're going, and but also. It was still very elegant. So they wouldn't really have used wood tables. Uh, they would have, have been covered over with some type of tablecloth. So I'm gonna start with just some white and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna take my tablecloth and pull it away from where the cigar is, of course. And I may just have to work around this sweets here. So I'm going to let my tablecloth run along here and here and just kind of balled up and come down like this and we'll have some extra bits of that tablecloth almost like painting the wave on a beach and so this tablecloth will turn and turn and turn by the way, this is called cross contour hatching. When you turn your drawing, um, it's called cross, cross contour hatching. So you can see what I'm looking to have happen here it is like a wave on a beach. I want my I want my piece of fabric to turn and turn down. Here, and as you can see, if you were painting the wave on a beach, of course, you would have this same kind of a look here, and this would go under. So I'm just right now working this in for myself here and here. And I got this little piece of tablecloth, let it turn out. And so this is this way. And then it's going to go down and flatten out to the edge of the table again. So this is what I have. This, turn, turn, turn. Here's the edge of the tablecloth as it turns out and back. And this goes over cross contour hatching. It's going to go over and flatten out and make. And we will work on this as we go along. So this turns over, comes out, and ends, and ends, and ends. And you can see that we're starting to have a tablecloth that has been pushed back. And that's what we're going to use for this right here. All right. All right, so... Now I'm painting over, of course, my dry painting. 
and here is all this. Also, I'm going to put in another turn of the tablecloth, let it come this way, as would be the case. Come here, come in between, and then maybe another fold like this and down. Because this tablecloth has just been pushed out of the way so the men can smoke their cigars. So we're getting the folds of the tablecloth. And we're going to push it down that side of the um, painting. Maybe I'll put another one over here. Another turn in the tablecloth right here. And again, it's very much like painting waves on a beach. Very much like that. I think I want a little more of a turn back here just for looks. And we'll let that, same thing, we'll let this turn. Okay, well that's the beginnings of my tablecloths, little bends and things. And of course when they're way back on the edge of the table, they're going to be higher. It'll be higher than the edge of the table, and then come and flatten out where it hits the edge of the table, and back out. And even this one, I think I'll let this one split like the branches of a tree. And I'm just using my white oil paint right now to describe that. This, on the other hand, is going to be wood. This would probably be an old table, an old grainy table. So I'm going to add some grain here. I'm just using a little bit of uh, black and a little bit of... Now, I'm going to create a grain in this table. And what you need to do if you're going to pursue painting is you need to make studies of grain. Now, if you were going to do trompe l'oeil, you really need to make studies of grain. But for just an oil painting, here I'm going to put a knot over here, and I'll let the yeah, and I'll let the grain work around that knot. Again, this is not a beautiful paint. This is, I'm sorry, this is not a beautiful table where very elegant, where the ladies would sit and perhaps very clean and shined up nice. No, this is just a table that may have at one time been that, but has outlived its time, outlived its usefulness as a showpiece. And the grains are kind of hanging out and raised and been burned in places by hot plates and tables. And hot ta I'm sorry, hot plates and pots and things like that. Maybe lots of spills have happened on this old table. So we're going to put a nice heavy grain in it. And we'll work on that as we get into details. But for now... I just want to know in my own mind where I'm going. Where am I going with this painting? So, here, a couple more grains over here, here, and here. And I'm not going to do too much. We'll get involved a little more when we get into detailing, which will happen after most of this dries. I'm going to use a little more white and ochre, and I want this tablecloth to turn in space also. So we're going to make a fold here, and the brush strokes are very important at this point. There's the end of that tablecloth right there and twists and goes behind and comes down along like this 
working its way along the edge of the table. And then this is the, this turn here is the underside. I'm going to add just a little darkness to show that. Again, it's very much like painting the wave on a beach, or a wave on a beach. And let it come out. We'll turn, and so on. Almost like the tube, if you were a surfer. Like going down the tube. And here, we'll take this, let it come. And this is the high point. Let it come, another high point, and then flatten out. High point, high point here, high point here, and then flatten out and work its way down. So that's the end of our tablecloth on this side here. And flattened out here, and so on. Okay. Now, a lot of the things that we did, the shadowing and so on, are going to have to be redone. But actually, and I'll show you right now, the softness of this paint here you can still see, there it is, you can still see the shadow underneath. Your underpainting is very strong, and you can still see the shadow of this walnut on this lift here. We'll make the top of that tablecloth where the light is turning it, of course. And then here, it starts to flatten out. So we'll flatten the tablecloth out a little bit more, like this. And right out, and out here. And as we get into the shadow, we're going to get a little softer. Now this is, at the moment, a white tablecloth. In the end, when we get to our one of our final touches, this tablecloth will probably not be white, white like white linen. It'll probably end up, and I'm almost positive, because it's what I have in mind, it will end up being an off-white maybe an older one that was retired from the main dining room or some such nonsense like that. And here again you can see my shadow from the um, dessert plate is still visible and my tablecloth is moving nicely. I'm going to let it go up and around on this and let it pull it underneath on the picture. So I'm going to light the top of this and let the fold come around. And that gives us just a nice little extra treatment on the on our overall um, painting. So I'm going to use again and I'm working with relatively thin paint. I'm using titanium. This is not flake white. This is titanium. If you use flake, flake is very much like white out. Once you put the flake on, you'll lose most of what's in your underpainting. It's that thick if you buy a good one. It's that thick and you can easily lose your underpainting. Now I'm going to soften that out. I still want it to be there. I want to see it because I'm going to replace it when I do my detailing. But at the moment, I'm going to give a nice shadowy shade. Here. And I want my tablecloth to... Oops. Now you got to be aware of... You see what I just had there? All these um, lines from my brush strokes, but I want this to sit on the table, so I have to reinstate 
my horizontal brush strokes here and here and here. So I want that to sit flat. Uh, especially on the table, I'll do the same here. And just beyond here, this is where my tablecloth continues out. Right over the shadow, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be careful not to lose this. And in a minute, we'll throw a shadow on it so it looks like it's part of the tablecloth. But then again, it's just one more wrinkle in the tablecloth. Maybe someone was not quite so delicate when they put this down on top of this wrinkled up tablecloth. And so it kind of got stuck underneath. And here we are. Again, soft brush strokes. Now, one thing too. You see me working my brush almost like a pencil. I always argue against this, but in some cases like this, like I'm doing here now, I will grab, especially a large brush, like a pencil, and work it, especially if I'm doing a lot of horizontal lines, and I want these to turn nicely. Again, if I was doing waves, in a California seascape where I want the waves to really stand out. All of your brush strokes, all of your brush strokes will create that illusion. As you can see, the brush strokes that I have, and they're very fine ones, are moving this up a little area and then back down. Up a little light area and then back down. Lights catching so that this whole um, tablecloth was just pushed out of the way as men would do when they were getting ready to play cards or smoke cigars or whatever it is. I'm going to just light the very edge of this a little more here and because it's likely that the edge of the tablecloth would have been, there would have been a hem sewed into it. So I want to show that hem. some kind of a drink that the men would have uh, shared together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the light work its magic. The light's coming in, as you can see, from here. So what's going to happen right across this, just about the center of this, there would be shadow. So I'm going to work a little bit of shadow right towards the middle because, of course, the... The middle uh, part of this is the thickest, okay? This is the most, the area where the most material is. And so it would have a nice and very thick uh, distance. So it would darken, of course at that point. So we're going to work in there and let it come right on down uh, into the base. And now, if you're down here, if you're looking down here, let me just soften that out. And again, this is not much more, if anything, uh, than um, a heavy velatura. Now, the if you look through uh, a, a glass, of course, you're going to be able to see the ellipse of the base, the part, that part that sits on the table. And because it's on the table, it would have a darker 
image. It would cast, the light would cast a darker image and help us. Ooh, not quite that dark. Okay. Let me use my finger on this. And it would cast a darker image and help and define the bottom part of this picture. So I'm going to get that in there nice. And as you can see, it's starting to look like a transparent, a transparent picture. You can see the material through the glass in the picture. Now also, I want to soften down right here, a little bit of darkness here. I know that's the side, and I'll get letters to say, but Mike, that's the side where they, <laughs> Dr. Sulo, that's the side where the light's coming in. Yes, it is. However, there is this handle throwing a shadow on the glass. Come in, hits this, and of course, gets obstructed. And we would have a similar situation here where the light is not penetrating into the glass picture quite so much. The same down here. We'd have a little bit happening here. Not too much, but a little. We've got to make that form turn in space. So let's get a little more here, a little more form happening here. Also, as the light pierces through this, it becomes apparent. You will see it. It will shine through. So, let's work from the ellipse, our original ellipse, and give the light an opportunity to dance through this. And I'm going to just touch that with my finger. I want it strong. At the same time, I don't want it so strong that it doesn't look like reflected light. So here we are. Here and here and here. Now also, we'd have some on the opposite side. The water would go into this. I'm sorry, the sunlight will go in through the glass and reflect back. So we'd have it on this side too. So let's give it come in and just kind of dance around in this area and kind of follow our. Now, what I'm doing with the edge here, and I don't know if I've mentioned this because this is a three hour lesson. What I've done with that edge in Italian is called fumato. That edge is a fumato edge, not a strong line like this. And fumato in Italian means smoke. So now it's a smoky edge. It's a very soft fumato smoky edge. Um, I think I'd like to put a little more light coming in here at the very edge of this. Just a little bit, a hit here, a hit there. The light come in. And of course, let's throw just a little bit coming in off the edge here. Now that original um, ellipse that we have in there, that's the end. That's the edge of the... That's the top of the material floating on top. So that's a flat surface, almost like a mirror. So the light will come in and hit this. So we'd have quite a bit happening here. We we'll have a reflection off of this end, and we'd have a reflection off of this end. <clears throat> I want to add a little bit of white, not much. This is a bit of detailing, and I'll just do just a little bit of it for now. And you can see that I was using 
white mixed white mixed with ochre to get those um, colors. But I think I like to put a little more highlight here and there like this highlight. It needs to be stronger, much stronger. Right now it's buried under probably uh, uh, glazes. So we want it to come alive a little bit here. Same over here. I think I want a little more whites here, maybe one here, a little highlight here and there. This could use a highlight, so could this. A little white, a little white here. Just to improve the strength of the of the sunshine coming through. Um, one more thing I want to do here too is I'm going to go with some ochre and remember our top ellipse. So I want to give myself a little extra here and here. Maybe a little bit where the spout comes together because this glass would be relatively thick where the spout is. I'm going to have that a little stronger. And it's starting to look like where we wanted to go in the beginning. Starting to look like a clear glass pitcher with some material and we had settled on apple cider. There it is. I think I want another little hit of highlight right here also. And looking pretty decent. Looking pretty good. I'm going to give a little dark line where the material in the glass rolls up just a bit. So I want to give this ellipse a little more strength here. And now you've got to remember, you've got to leave a bit of a space because the glass, the material, whatever it's filled with, will not go to this edge. It'll go to the edge of the ellipse, and right in here is the thickness of the glass. Don't lose that. Don't lose that, because it'll look amateurish. So you want to give yourself a little separation for your ellipse. I'm going to do it over here also. A little turn again. There's the edge of the glass. There's where my ellipse starts. So there's probably about an eighth of an inch happening there. And these little touches are the things that make your painting museum quality. Oh, it's just a little dab here and a little touch there and your painting will really start to on a little shadow here. There. I want to just separate the bottom of this handle with the main part of the pitcher. Not too bad, Mike. It's looking decent. I want to give myself a little stronger just at this point. Separation of the picture on sitting on that tablecloth. As I had promised oh, back a little while ago in this project, we're going to soften down the background even a little more. Right now it's sienna and umber and I'm going to add in some gray. I'm using, I'm using lamp black and some white. And I'm going to soften this down. I don't want it too dark, but I want to make it more or less gray. And the reason to make it gray is because everything here so far, this is all warm, that's warm. The only thing that's not is the green ashtray. So I want to soften down my painting here. Using quite a bit of liquid, and I'm doing a velatura over this side. So I want a nice gray um, 
Now, because I use lamp black, this is going to end up being a cool gray. And here I am with this. I'm going to soften this out. I'm going to get a little heavier on this corner. And what I'm doing here, as you can see, is I'm going to grade this from very dark and grade it up, up, up until a warm brown as we have here. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown velatura right in here like this. Use my fingers on it. And I want a nice gray here from um, warm background into cool background. And that will give us a little extra dimension on our composition. Okay. Got that in. Doesn't take long. Also, the darkness here, I'm going to get a little umber and lots of liquid. And I'm going to give myself a little extra darkness right in here just to emphasize that just the tiniest bit and I think I'm going to use that in the handle as well okay again I'm going to fumato this edge nice soft fumato edge and the color is coming better for my taste the color is starting to look more uh, stronger the way I like to paint strong heavy statements and here what I need is a detail on this glass is highlights I need to highlight this a nice strong highlight right across the glass part of it along the edge here and I'm going to let it crawl around the ellipse of the top right at the beginning like that. And I think I want to light. Now this started out to be glass, but I painted it to look like old metal, like old white metal. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a little bit of highlight, not too much. So it still looks metalish. And here. I want to have a little bit of reflection. That might actually be too much. But it's not too bad. And then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to go back to this lamp black that I've been using. I'm going to, ooh, I'm going to create a shadow. And I want to soften this down. I want a strong statement though. And there it is. I want a strong statement under the sphere and down. Using my finger each time to soften it out. And I just want this to be more, and there it is. I want it to be more, whoops. And you can see, as you paint with oil, in oil, that it's very difficult to make the mistake. Because if you do, paint over it. And if it's really a big mistake, wait till the next day. Wait for it to dry. And then go ahead and make the correction. All right. That's more like what I want to have there. Okay. Now also, as the whipped cream comes up, and I found out that that was whipped cream, and it has little peaks on it. So I'm going to use a round pointed brush, and I'm going to create that look. Here and here. Okay, so that's a little more realistic than where I started. Okay, now also my cigar. I want to light the cigar a little more, so I'm going to use 
the yellow and I'm going to turn it a little more this way. I want it to stand out. I was looking at it before and it is not, it was not strong enough against that very dark green ashtray. And to help myself there too, I have mixed the dark green, which I use black and yellow, and I'm going to use that deep green in the shadow part of this. So here it is. And back in here also. And I think I'm going to use it in here also. Alright, so I got a little extra color in this piece. I add a little bit of white to my dark green. I'm going to get a highlight reflection off the back corner, one off of this corner. And again, this is a piece, an ashtray made out of, okay, not too bad. Yeah, this is an ashtray made out of marble. So it would be reflective. I'm also going to get a little deeper. I want the shadow under the cigar to get deeper. So I'm going in with some very dark um, black and brown and I want the ashtray, I'm sorry, I want the cigar to throw a shadow into the ashtray. And here it is. And like that. Okay. Not too bad, it's coming. Good. I want to tone down a little bit of detailing here. I want to tone down my shadows. I really want, especially on the wooden part, I really want those shadows to be nice and dark. So I've made a dark gray, black, and a little bit of white, not too much white. I want a nice sharp shadow happening here. And do the same here because again this shadow is on the wood. So I want this to be real strong. I want a good strong statement here. Okay. And also Also, the nutcracker is not completed. It needs some detailing. And there are teeth right in here. And that's the thing that grabs onto the nut, the nut shells. And that's how you crack them, of course. So I'm going to put a couple of striations. And they grab the nut, as you know. And hold it in place while you're overpowering it with your wrists here. Alright, this needs to be a little stronger. Here, here, here. And then also, you see just a bit of it on this side. Just a touch on this side. And, uh, let's see. And I see also on the nutcrackers, they are a, a dull silver, but they do, here and there, throw a nice reflection. So I'm going to put that on there, and the ends turn this way. The ends turn, like that. And I'll put a little highlight on this one here too. Soften it out again with my finger. Whoops, too much. Yeah. This one's very heavy white paint. It's still titanium, but I wanna I didn't want quite that much paint on, so I used the rag, pulled some of it off, like this edge a little more. Alright. Okay, it's a little strong. So I'm gonna just touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. Alright. 
So that's working. Now, I want to detail. Now you see all of our graining that's on here, all the grain that's going on. I'm going to go in with some um, black, and I'm going to just give some of this graining deeper pockets here, like this. The knots, sometimes, as you know, they are part of them falls out. I think I'll do another one here, a very deep grain here, and perhaps it's split open, and you've seen that before, where the an old table will crack along here, along the grain lines here. I think I'll put another knot over here. Uh, too crazy with this because I don't want it to take away from the most important parts of my painting. Yeah. Maybe another bit of a Yeah, okay, I'll buy that. Soften it, soften it, soften it. Hmm. Now our tablecloth. Our tablecloth is in dire need of some color. So I have mixed my dark blue with white and I made a nice soft, a nice soft blue and I'm going to use that for shadows and now these are cool shadows and I'm going to put in some cool shadows. Whoops, that's pretty bright. So I'm going to soften it down. I do want the change of color. I don't want this tablecloth to be so thin in appearance that it looks like gauze or something. I want it to have life. So I'm going to put some cool areas in the, in the tablecloth here. And I'm going to come back in a few minutes and I'm going to detail these walnuts. But first, I want to get this color, this cool blue, into the fabric. I'll put it over here also. Into the fabric here. And I'll do some over here. I think I want some of that down here also. Alright, that's nice. We'll leave that alone. I need some of that here. Alright. And right along the edge of the shadow of the nutcracker. I want that to be a little stronger. Here. And up in here. So I'm using this light blue very thinly, but I'm using the light blue to suggest a thicker state of affairs for the tablecloth. Right in here it needs it. Here it can use it. Yeah. And it's working pretty well. I'll get some up in here. All right. Okay. I'll buy that. It's working. in now I need a little here. Okay. So what's happening is the cool uh, blue is working against this warm uh, color here. Let's see if I can get this shadow to work with the blue. I don't know. It might not go, but let's give it a try. And now uh, we're going to have to get maybe not. Not too bad. 
Uh, let's try bringing in some dark. Yeah, uh, not too dark either. I want it to be a nice, uh, yeah. nice turn on this, and the shadow comes down. All right, not too bad. I want to detail here with some heavier white. If this is the edge, and it is, of the tablecloth, I want it to come around. I'm working nice and heavy with this. Come around, and then twist in and go out. This is the end. Here it is, and down. Now that's the hem. Now they could pick her over here also. That's the hem that we talked about of the tablecloth. And there it is. And that could come right around. So that's nice and strong. You see the fabric turn almost like the wave of a uh, ocean. And I'm going to let it turn this way also. Not quite as strong as that. And out. Okay. Looks pretty decent. I want to straighten this out a little bit. Oh, there. And one more thing, I want to get in some deep blue and restate. I want to restate these shadows that are in that are in on the tablecloth. Shadows from the picture. Now you could see we did the shadows already and they do come through from our underpainting, but I want to make these heavier. I want to make them stronger, keep my brush strokes going in the same direction. That's a little better. And I'll put some over here. A little stronger right along the edge there. And off into the background. What else? Want? Oh yeah. I want it for these walnuts here and here. All right, there. There it is. I'm going to pull those walnuts up. All right, pretty decent, not bad. Okay, now. I want to add in some smoke. Smoke from the cigar. And so, I'm going to take some gray and I'm going to come off the edge of the cigar where it's burning. And as you know, it'll come into a V shape. Work its way up and then just kind of twist around whatever way the breeze is blowing is the way that it will go. Alright, there that is. Now, I do also want to add a little bit of white into this. too much, but I do want it to just softly wisp away. All right, and I'll take some of that down with my finger. I don't want it to be too monster smoky. It's only one little cigar. Although some cigars are like that, they do s smoke a lot. And just let this go off into nowhere, and then also from the back, and I'm going to use light blue for that. From the back where the hole is, it also will emit a little tiny bit of smoke. And there that is. And I want to light this a little bit more 
the ashes, and I'm going to put this on nice and heavy so that we can see it. Because this is marble, I want to catch a few nice highlights in this. Maybe one here, one here, let it turn the corner, go down the edge. And one up in here, and one up in here. I'm going to soften it down, I'm going to touch it, soften it down, tiniest bit. Again, this is not Trump Roy. I'm not trying to fool people with it. I'm just trying to create a pretty painting. I want a little more light on this smoke. A little more light on that smoke from the cigar. All right. Okay, looking halfway decent. And I am done with this painting. Here is our completed still item, ready to be gifted or to sell. Please join us on our next exploration of the fine arts where we will travel to Clinton, Massachusetts and do a tour of the Russian Icon Museum. Magnificent small museum with many, many exceptionally beautiful Russian icons. And also for our step-by-step -step program, we will paint an icon one step at a time quite interesting and quite different from most things that I teach in these explorations of the fine arts.